A.R. Ammons, known to his friends and students and colleagues as Archie, taught at Cornell beginning in 1964. He retired in 1998 and died in 2001. Uh, an incredibly uh, important figure for Cornell University for its literary life, but more generally, was one of the great poets of the 20th century, I would say. And he's most admired for the range of his work, partly because I think he was a figure who showed the connections between things that are sometimes seen as separate from each other, above all the sciences and the arts. He really tried to bring them together. His, his work spanned many extremes. He was absolutely immersed in the natural world, but he also thought about it in the context of the universe as a whole. All of that gets into his poetry, along with just the things he sees in his backyard, the squirrels and the chipmunks and, and the trees and so on. One thing about Ammons is he kind of is the poet of everyday things. His specialty is his ability to find the small, minute changes between day-to-day -day life. And I think something, there's something so special about Cornell being the constant in his everyday life. Oh, it's interesting to go to a place that the poet was thinking about when they wrote the poem, because then it's not just like your projection of what the the world the poem's about. You get to see the world the poet was in when they wrote it. And I think it's cool that this poem in some ways is about like, like it's about the gorge, but it's also about just like the universe as a whole. I don't know, <laughs> Carl Sagan and all. <laughs> but um. Yeah, just the gorges just feel very full of time. I went down by Cascadilla Falls this evening, the stream below the falls, and picked up a hand-sized stone, kidney-shaped, testicular, and thought all its motions into it. The 800 mile per hour earth spin the 190 million mile yearly displacement around the sun, the overriding grand hall of the galaxy with the 30,000 miles per hour of where the sun's going, thought all the interweaving motions into myself, dropped the stone to dead rest, the stream from other motions broke rushing over it. Shelterless, I turned to the sky and stood still. Oh, I do not know where I'm going that I can live my life by this single creek. What drew me to this poem is I think it's kind of like a universal freshman experience to walk from north um, to central campus like every day. And I think when you first walk it in the fall, when you're just new to the university, uh, one thing that kind of sticks out to you is the sound of the water, because it's so loud. And over time, the sound doesn't change in decimal or volume, but it kind of fades into the background. And then there's the first freeze of the season, and you walk across the bridge, and the water is no longer making a sound. It's silent, and the silence kind, the silence is kind of deafening. And I think with Trip Hammer Bridge, what Ammons is kind of thinking about when writing this is the silence. I wonder what to mean by sanctuary, if a real or apprehended place, as of the bell rung in a gold surround, or as of a silver rose along the beaches of clouds, seas don't break or black fountains overspill, jail. Ice here is shapelier than anything, on the eaves massive, jawed along the gorge ledges, solid in the plastic blue boat fall left water in. If I think the bitterest thing I can think of that seems like reality, slickened back, hard, shocked by rip high wind, sanctuary, sanctuary, I say it over and over and the word sound is the one place to dwell. That's it, just the sound and the imagination of the sound, a place.